So good evening, everyone, and um, get started here this evening. Before we call the meeting to order, we have to administer the oath of office for our newly elected trustees. Uh, I believe Trustee Romero has already done her oath of office earlier this week. And so we'll go ahead and get started with the uh, swearing in oath of office for, uh, for Julie Hupp, our newly elected board trustee. Okay, uh, moving on, we'll go ahead and administer the oath of office to myself as a <laughs> reelected board official. All right, well, with that being said, we can now call the meeting to order and recognize or get a recognition of a quorum. So we'll go ahead and uh, call the meeting to order at 6.06 .06 p.m. Um, currently, uh, I'm present, uh, Neil can be present. Uh, Ms. Our, uh, Trustee Romero, are you present? Yes, I'm present. So she is remote and joining us remote. I don't know if you can hear us, Sandra. Yes, I. Can you hear me? I am. Okay, we can hear you now. We just have you on one of the computers right now. So we've got okay. you there. Okay. Trustee Sullivan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Trustee Biden. Present. Okay. And Trustee Hub. Okay. And then uh, Dr. Ramirez. Present. Okay. Ms. Peterson. Present. Okay. And uh, Ms. Torres. Okay. All right. So the first item is the adoption of the agenda. Sorry, with just wanted to. We should have a motion first. I move that we adopt the agenda for this evening as presented or amended. Can I have a second? 
Okay, any discussion or amendment? Yeah, okay. Uh, so again, just a recommendation. Um, to be the first order. I'm okay. a 14-2. To bring that up after the, uh, if there's any audience comments, correct? Or do you need to go very first? Tammy? Uh, yes, the, the first one, because that was, would be on closed session items. Okay, all right. So all those in favor of adopting the agenda as amended or presented and amended? Aye. 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 Okay, so that is uh, five zero, the uh, agenda is adopted. Okay, so do we have any public comment on closed session items? No, okay. And then closed session, I believe we actually do not have any items for closed session. Correct, we'll table that to Jen. This is my recommendation. Okay, all right. So we will continue with the meeting. So we'll go ahead and start the opening uh, session or reconvene in public. And we'll go ahead and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Yeah. Pledge of Okay, so um, first item is the minutes. Can I get a motion for the approval of the are we, minutes? What's that? 14. You wanna do 14? Okay, all right, we'll go ahead and we'll do 14 now then. Okay, all right, we'll do that then. Thank you. Thank you, boy.
I have one, not, not so much in uh, the current year, but is in the out years. Like we significantly missed our projected enrollment. And I know that we've got a soft landing and we're good for that. But going through in 23, 24, 24, 25, um, along with the fact that Ventura's got the highest, second highest decreasing in enrollment or, uh, in the state, did we reduce our projected enrollment for uh, those two years uh, sufficiently? You know, we're hoping to gain, but we're also in declining enrollment. And is that, is that sufficient? Sense. Uh, I'm assuming that we're following that and we'll have some sort of marketing or an outreach to that group, that population as it comes online. Uh, yes. Uh, so our, let me just make mention of uh, two things. One, the our inner district efforts are certainly underway. We certainly started to message those. And uh, just earlier today, we were having a conversation about um, just our procedures for accepting them and uh, really responding to them pretty quickly. Uh, when it comes to marketing, the sensitivity there is around, um, we still do have district boundaries and so do others, other districts. So uh, we have to just be good uh, colleagues and good partners uh, when it comes to recruiting uh, anywhere outside of our district boundaries, right? So we have been able to find uh, some useful ways and productive ways and ethical ways of doing that, uh, such as social media, and really promoting things um, from within uh, to be able to outreach to more people. But yes, that is something that uh, we've known about, uh, housing coming online. And I have had very light conversations with the superintendent at SOMAS about their capacity to take on however many students they're projecting and whether that's something that may be feasible at some point in time, very, very early on at this point. Thank you. I was just going to follow up with that. The projected numbers um, for enrollment are lower than what they are this month. So I feel that that's a good projection because, yeah, it will go up and down a little bit, but at least the ones that are currently projected for 23 through 25 are lower than November of last year, of this year. Um, question in regards to our cafeteria funds um, I guess, how much are we looking to spend by? whatever deadline that we need to spend and do we have a list of priorities for that? So we've had a, we've had a spend down plan uh, since I've been a part of the district, uh, but we've also we've been 
I would say we were victims of our own success. We were granted, if you recall, we had a, a kitchen cafeteria grant about a year ago, a little bit over a year ago, which brought well over 25,000 to the district, which was a benefit. Um, and then there's this possibility of an additional grant. And in addition to that, we've been very efficient. Uh, we've not wanted to spend, especially because we knew there were going to be some renovations happening to the kitchen as it was. And we wanted to see what that would entail before going on to other phases. So we have some things around, um, around equipment that we definitely wanna upgrade. And we already in fact have. Some of the tables in there were upgraded very recently. You may have seen those in the expenditures. And then secondly, uh, there's another storage space, which we want to see this project through first to then talk about how that space might be renovated as well. So um, we do have some some near term projects that we want to turn our attention to, but we've been both very efficient and the beneficiaries of some additional funding, which kind of, uh, you know, reset, if you will, the spend down plan. Well, and I know that we can use those funds for staff as well. Yeah. Well, some. And just on that point alone, we actually have increased our staffing um, in terms of hours and personnel um, from where, at least from where uh, levels were when I came in. So we have expanded that somewhat and um, we happen to be very fortunate to have some very qu quality people, very, very efficient, hardworking people in that space right now that are, um, you know, if anything, they're being hamstrung a bit by, by facilities, but we're getting ready to to uh, turn that corner here very soon. I'm just trying to also use my, what we've heard from our stu student voices on you know other improvements that could maybe be made in the cafeteria realm. And so whether it's equipment, um, things that can be reusable instead of thrown away, you know, and very disposable, whether that can incorporate some element of agriculture because we could grow our own um, fruits or vegetables, I think all of those things should be explored to see if they would be possible for that money. Uh, yeah, it, without going into it too much, I just want to respond to that. Uh, you know, many of our plans uh, dating back to last spring were well underway. We, we had kind of gotten momentum. Uh, they stalled out a bit now because of uh, obviously uh, the infrastructure and just the facilities, but we have every plan on resuming many of those, including uh, partnerships here with local growers. Um, also, which produce uh, and bring us, um, you know, fresh produce that is locally grown. So uh, that has been a real um, highlight for us that we'll continue to um, to focus on as soon as uh, we turn the corner here. And it really will be January where we're we're going to be in a much better position. And soup, the soup. Yes. <laughs> I have one last thing, and this is for Tammy. I'm kind of curious, you know, we've gone through some iterations with the budget, and on the general fund total expenditures, there's some percentages at the end. I'm curious to get more information of, of those year over year and see how they fluctuate year over year. Over year. Percentages. Yes, just percentages. Okay. Not, not the actual dollar amounts, but... Uh, the expenditures and sell or the percentages of each category. So, um, and that's one of the different things over the last.
Right. That, that's just, I'm just trying to see how that flows and, and how that's been affecting uh, the budget over the past several years and, and what it'll mean to us going forward. So thank you very much. Because Axles would be fine. I think Axles would be Okay, so can I get a motion for the acceptance or the adoption of the 2022-2023? What? We did not actually. We didn't, but I did mention it at the start. So I'm going to take that as the first. So I'll, I'll make the motion. Um, I have a second. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion or questions? Okay. All those in favor for the adoption of the 22, uh, 2022, 2023 first annual report. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? Sandra, I couldn't hear you. Are you in favor? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, so that's uh, adopted 5-0. Uh, thank you as always. Thank you for your consideration. You're welcome. Okay, so now we're going to go resume our agenda. And so now we um, Okay, so no minutes to approve this meeting. They're going to be tabled till next meeting. Okay. And then the uh, audience to address the Board of Trustees, comments by the public? Okay, none. Okay, now we're up to the Board Reorganization and Election of Officers. So the first portion we have to have is to elect a new Board President. So can I... Uh, uh, wait, can you do a, we have a new Board member here. This can you tell about the process? Yes, I'm sorry. So... Um, Julie, our process usually, you know, every December we reorganize the board and we have had in the past a process of progression that vice president serves as a term and then serves as president and the president, you know, however we want to do that. And that's been kind of a process that we've had in place. There was a little change in that a year or so ago, just for a one time kind of thing. Um, but it is by no means set in stone, but it is kind of the culture that we've kind of had to kind of progress that along now. Um, Ms. Silva, would you like to? Yeah, I'd like to interject something there. I think we've done it once over the last five years, or we followed that, yeah, and the progression has never really been followed. Okay, um, I have a different recollection of that, but either way, okay. So um, I guess the first. Um, no, I, I can say that because I've been the clerk for the last three years. And it never moved up in, in that progression. The only, the only the only progression that we've had has been vice president to president, and that's the only one that we've really adhered to. That at least when I came on the board was kind of the precedent that they had set in the reorganization of the board. There it hadn't been any other progression that I was aware of at that point. Okay, um, so first uh, office up for uh, election is uh, president of the board. So can we have any nominations for anyone who'd like to make a nomination for? President of the upcoming year. I'd like to nominate uh, Trustee Romero. Okay, I would second that nomination. Any other nominations? Okay. Although, all right. So, um, I guess at this point, we'll go ahead and. Uh, flip. Accept I'm sorry, Sandra. Do you do you accept? Yes, I do. Thank you. I do. Yes, thank you. Okay. All right, so she accepts the nomination. All right, and hearing no other nominations or any other nominations? Okay, all those in favor of electing uh, Trustee Romero as the president of the board for the upcoming year, 2022, or I'm sorry, 2023, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so five zero. Okay, so the next office up for nomination is for vice president of the board, and nominations for vice president. Okay, I'll go ahead and uh, I will nominate Trustee Dryden for Vice President. I will accept. Any second for the nomination? Okay, 
Okay, I need a second if anybody's willing to second. I'll second the motion. Okay, so we have a second. All right, any other uh, nominations or any other nominees? Okay, hearing none, then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, put that to vote. All those in favor of election of Trustee Dryden for Vice President for the upcoming 2023-2023 school year. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, five, zero. Approved or elected. And then uh, nomination for clerk of the board. Nominate Trustee Sullivan to serve as clerk of the board for how many years now? What's that? Fourth in a row. Fourth in a row. All right. I'll second. Okay. Trustee Sullivan, you accept the nomination? Okay, he ex uh, accepts. Any other nominations for clerk of the board? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of electing Trustee Sullivan as clerk of the board for the upcoming year, 2023. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Julie, I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Okay. All right, so that's uh, five zero. <laughs> And then the appointment of a secretary to the board. I move to appoint the superintendent. Okay. I would second that motion to appoint the uh, superintendent as the secretary to the board. Any other nominations? Any discussion? Director Mears, you accept? Gladly accept. Thank okay. You. All right. All those in favor of the appointment of a trustee, or of, a trustee of a Dr. Ramirez, the, the superintendent, the secretary of the board, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. Five zero. All right. And then uh, moving on now, we have the election of board member representative. Uh, so uh, the first uh, board member to represent us is the vote in the election for the member of the county committee on school district organization. We have a nominee or board member who would like to serve for the uh, county committee on school district organization. I've done it for like the last 16 years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Trustee Sullivan is willing to serve as that position again. Any other nominees or anyone else want to do that? Okay, all those in favor of electing Trustee Sullivan as the representative to the County Committee on School District Organization, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, five zero. All right, next to the uh, representative of the board to the Camarillo Chamber of Education Committee. Any nominees? It was just Mr. Sullivan again. Huh? Did you do that last year or I did you do it? Oh, you, no, that's the uh, Chamber Education Committee, Camarillo Chamber I Education. Is that person? Do you remember who that was last year? Uh, going uh, dealing with the uh, yeah, Camarillo Chamber, Chamber of Commerce. Right. Which I don't know that there was. I don't know if we actually had any meeting. Well, the Chamber that. Education Committee. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I, to be honest with you, I don't know how active that particular committee is. Okay. Okay. So uh, nothing like the president to try to get that restarted. Okay. Is anyone willing to serve in that position? If the I would like to know more. I, I'd yeah. be willing to serve. Okay. That. We'll have to get a little more information on that and see if they're active again. But um, all right, so Mr. Sullivan is willing to do that. Any other nominees? Anyone else want to do that? Okay. All those in favor of having Trustee Sullivan be our Camarillo Chamber Education Committee representative? Aye. Aye. Okay. Five zero. And then we have the Mesa Education Foundation MEF um, representative for the board. And I know uh, Trustee Dryden, you've done that in the past. Or okay. Again, PFO, okay, I'm gonna keep those together. All right, any discussion, any other uh, nominees or anyone wanna do that? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of uh, Trustee Dryden serving as both the uh, board, member, board member representative to the Mesa Education Foundation, MEF and Mesa Parent Organization, PFO. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay, so that is, uh, is approved uh, five zero, okay. So now moving along, we'll go ahead and turn it over to the superintendent's report. Jamie, or Sandra, you're the new vice president. So I'm gonna let him. 
can she uh, lead the meeting from there? I don't it. believe Sandra can read. She's a yeah, can you, can you, you read the rest? It, Jamie, you want to... if, if you could preside over it, that'd be great, Jamie. I'm not in a position to to preside over it tonight. Okie dokie. Then let's start. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Board of Trustees. And actually, as we transition, or prior to transitioning, I I invited a special guest among who she was amongst us, and that would be trustee or former trustee, uh, Krista Nowak. So I really she is now a promoted a panelist, so she's online now, and I just wanted to take uh, just a few moments to recognize uh, Mrs. Nowak um, for her um, commitment and for her service really to this board. Um, so we have something for her here, which I will get to her, uh, but it reads in recognition of your dedication and leadership to the Mason Union School Board of Trustees 2018 through 2022. And I just wanted to celebrate um, a few highlights. Um, I have to include that that is in many ways, the bulk of those years were pandemic related and all of those things that it brought. So leadership um, of this organization and of this community during that time was um, incredible and challenging and difficult, uh, but um, certainly her leadership was enormous to that to those efforts. Um, in that time also, uh, the, the uh, work that was done uh, facilities-wise and modernization was incredible. Uh, we, we either concluded or began three major, major pieces of renovation uh, that um, are, as I've mentioned before, likely to last us decades uh, to come. And uh, through one of those years, uh, Mrs. Nowak was also our board president. So uh, just a lot to celebrate. And uh, as somebody who is homegrown and cares uh, tremendously for this community, I'm, I'm really uh, honored to, um, to say a few words and recognize her for her efforts and for her commitment. Um, and beyond that, on a personal note, many, many times that we had uh, important conversations as we were making decisions. And Mrs. Nowak was both always there to inform me, to listen, but ultimately uh, something that I appreciate, which is her, her support. And so very, very grateful to her on a very personal and professional note. So I don't know if you want to say anything, Mrs. Nowak, but you certainly can. Do I dare? It's recording. Um, I just want to say thank you to obviously our past board. It was a fun four years. Dr. Canby and I came on together and just kind of learned the ropes on our own with our previous trustee. And, you know, Jamie and I just like, you know, did our definitely sometimes had different perspectives, but I feel like we had a really great team and trustee Sullivan the same. So we all came from different ideas and what we expected this school district to give our children. And even though we didn't always see necessarily eye to eye on what we wanted, um, I really think that Mace is in great hands. I mean, it's got a great board. The superintendent, Dr. Ramirez heard um, you know, many of my thoughts and processes and ideas and all these crazy things over the years. So I am very thankful to have been able to serve and to be a part of the school. And especially my, while, while my children were there, um, just thank you. I mean, it was, it was fun. It was tasking towards the end of the four years, especially through COVID and kids transitioning, but it was, it was a, um, beneficial time to grow for sure and understand a different dynamic outside of my comfort zone. So thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Nowak on behalf of all of us. And um, I'll just turn it to trustees if you'd like to make any mention or comment. Mm -hmm. Just wanna say thanks, Krista. Thank you for always being there and being a, a good year to listen to and bounce things awesome. So I appreciate you. Always. When I think one of um, Krista's strengths is the fact that she is, you know, so deeply rooted in the community and that she cares so much for the community and kids. And so our focus was always about, you know, the kids and how to support the students. And I think that really, you know, shown through. So thank you for all of your effort. Thank you very much, Ms. Noack. You're you, what you contributed to the board. And uh, you're being here and 
it, it was the district thing that means that you're no longer here. And they squished me out. Painting. They squished me out, Mr. Sullivan. <laughs> Honestly, you guys are all a blessing uh, to the district, to the school, to each other. You all have different perspectives. You all have the kids at heart. And I, I'm very um, encouraged to see what this district does overall moving forward. And I'm happy to help you guys and champion behind the scenes in any way that I can. I will be transitioning to um, the superintendent's report. And uh, with that said, I know we have um, some guests here that I want to be able to turn it over and honor in just a moment. Uh, but um, really what uh, for today for tonight wanted to really make mention, start with making mention of so many of the highlights uh, that uh, have to do with learning, but not just learning from a purely academic standpoint, but really showcase uh, how well-rounded our school program happens to be. So um, one of the, one of the, given that we're now in December, really the start of winter brings to a close the fall season. And I, you know, we have a, a slide there that, um, that really talks about the, the breadth of uh, involvement that we've had in fall athletics. And I really wanted to thank the parents and families who came out here now and the girls who I wanted to uh, showcase. And if you could just basically maybe stand as I call your name. But these girls uh, are part of the seventh and eighth grade girls volleyball team coached by Mrs. Kristen Kulat, who were able to go undefeated this season and uh, tremendous, tremendous accomplishment. So I'm gonna name off our, our girls who are here in attendance. Um, and then name off the entire team. But I'll start with Alexis Finfrock. Um, let's go ahead and give her a round of applause. Lily Srenta. Victoria Fernandez. And Riley Espinosa. Our other team members who were not able to attend, but certainly are, are part of the team, uh, Kinsley Blatt. Uh, Berlinda Silva, uh, Analia Lopez, uh, Liz Referente, and Kyla Sahagan. I want to make sure that we then get also our appreciation. And uh, more than anything else, you know, it, it really is uh, when we talk about Mesa, here's a perfect uh, example. And to the parents who uh, were there to drive them uh, to and from games, practices, uh, this, this cohort of girls also participated in a separate league. Um, and separate tourneys, uh, just a really committed bunch. And of course, our efforts, uh, I can't say enough about Mrs. Gulat who coached them uh, throughout, and of course, other people who contributed to that and to those efforts. Uh, Mesa in particular, in sports in general, but I'll speak to volleyball in particular, has had a long and rich tradition uh, that uh, then goes on to show over at the high school level. Uh, particularly over at Rio Mesa, where many of our students happen to enroll. Um, if you look at their varsity roster on down, um, and they're not alone in that, in other high schools as well, but um, you'll see representation from Mesa. And comparatively speaking to competition with much bigger schools, with many more students, and um, we obviously, as a school, uh, more than held our own, in fact, uh, they were undefeated in league play. So we are very, very proud of you. Very, very excited to, to have you here. And I just wanted to uh, share this, this uh, accomplishment with the board and uh, with the community at large. And of course, with the families and parents who are here with us this evening. So uh, with that said, I wanted to maybe just turn it over to the board for any, any thoughts and opinions. Oh, sorry, sorry, my apologies. Absolutely, Jasleen Rios. Yes, my apologies. I wanna thank you for representing Mesa so well and being courageous enough to be involved in the after school program and to go out and play. And I hope you had a lot of fun. I hope you met lots of people from other teams. I wanna thank the coaches for taking all the time out of your personal schedules to help these young ladies 
grow and develop in, in magnanimous ways and teaching them good sportsmanship and skills and uh, the way to interact together and with others. Thank you very much. How many of you are planning on trying out for next year volleyball, whether it's a team here at Mesa or um, high school? Well, very good, congratulations, good job. So just as we transition, I want to just thank the board for allowing me the opportunity to be able to bring um, some of our community here to celebrate, uh, to really uh, showcase also for you uh, the many things that we do here at Mesa and uh, the incredible talents that we have amongst our students. Um, and you see here, uh, we have a lot to be proud of just on the academic realm. I'm sorry, the athletic realm. Um, we have uh, our, our volleyball team, of course. Uh, our, our other team coached by Mr. Dryden, uh, our, our uh, sixth grade flag football team coached by Mr. Ambris, and uh, our sixth grade volleyball uh, team. This is the season, it's volleyball and flag football. Um, and we are now entering into, um, into a new season. But just to wrap up the girls volleyball team coached by Mr. Cousineau and Mrs. Dickey, you'll see there the places that they landed in terms of league play or competition. Um, you see kind of a buildup for the future and a pretty healthy pipeline of, of future success, if you will. So very thankful to all of the coaches, very thankful to all of their families who support them in that. And uh, most all of these are parents here um, in our school and very grateful for their dedication as well. Um, we are heading into a winter season where there will be boys and girls basketball. Um, and that that pretty much is, is the bulk of of our of our league play as we head into a new season but just wanted to showcase for the board a little bit of what what it is that we do at mesa and for the community really um next slide please uh but of course it's not the only thing that we do at mesa we are i've also really uh tried to expand and and bring back uh if you will many of our extracurriculars or co-curriculars uh, so there you see the winter athletics is three through eight basketball. Um, and that league play has gotten underway, uh, not for our middle school students yet, but for um, for our, our, not for our seventh and eighth graders, but for our um, uh, three through six. And then Camrio, um, I wanted to highlight our involvement in Camrio uh, Academic Olympics. Uh, that's uh, for grades four through eight. And there are a number of different subject events that are um, available. Uh, that registration was extended. It was extended a couple of times, but it was extended over to December 16th. And um, that uh, has also been a very, very productive experience for us that connects us to other schools in more of the academic realm. Um, and then of course, uh, many thanks to Mrs. Romero, to Judge Romero uh, for their leadership in mock trial, uh, grades six through eight although that really should be inclusive of fifth graders because there are fifth graders there that are serving as understudies and developing the pipeline for the future. 
Uh, but this year, that the junior uh, mock trial competition has become, as you've heard before, much more formalized in, in no small part. And in fact, because of the leadership of Mrs. Romero, uh, our trustee Romero, uh, who has um, really um, uh, brought that into a new level with the Ventura County Office of Education. Um, and so the competition will take place as it, as it indicates on the slide, February 8th and 9th, and um, with, the, with the VCOE or Ventura County Office of Education serving as an official sponsor this year. Okay, uh, moving into health and wellness, uh, you know, we continue and we'll have more of this uh, when we get to attendance, but we continue to very, be very thoughtful about the way in which uh, uh, COVID uh, continues to affect us and just in terms of everyday health. Um, and we, you know, this continues to be a big challenge for us as far as maintaining uh, kids in school in a, in a way that uh, allows us to have continuity. Uh, I'll mention more as I, meant, as I said uh, in the attendance section. But just as we will continue to message out to families that we do have plenty of uh, at-home tests that parents can take multiple kits of um, as, so that they can test during and certainly as we um, come back from break. So that will be a push for us this week and next as we head into the winter break. Okay, so I wanted to make uh, just a uh, few um, mentions of uh, facilities. And in this case, it's facilities and transportation. Uh, so very, very excited. Uh, cannot believe how excited I am to, to really, uh, as board members already know, Mesa was awarded um, a grant uh, for two electric vehicles, two electric buses. And uh, this dates back to last spring where uh, through the work of uh, Mr. Dave Norris, who has since retired, um, spearheaded efforts here at the district and amongst the small school districts of getting us uh, to that next level of in our transportation department. So um, we we have um, been awarded or or been been granted that uh, Part A. We actually were approved for Part A. Part B is in progress. We have 30 days to respond and gather our documentation in order to complete this. But I have every every confidence that we will. And um, the idea is to exchange two of our diesel vehicles, two of our diesel buses, um, in exchange for two electric vehicles. And we we um, we are uh, predicting that it'll be, or estimating that it'll be approximately 350,000 per vehicle. Actually, it may push more into 375 per vehicle, uh, which would get us over to uh, what amounts to uh, close to $750,000 grant. Uh, which is tremendous for us. Um, we are actively already in conversations with uh, a bus dealer, uh, Bus West, and uh, and the timeline unfortunately is not yet available, but it will be, you know, in short order. Um, and I want to be able to uh, thank uh, special special thanks to BSA directors Dave Norris and Orlando De Leon, uh, who have been really on top of this from the moment that those grant opportunities were announced and also our local uh, Mesa bus lead, Roel Perez, who has been working on site, um, rounding up records, uh, making sure that everything is uh, in line to fulfill those applications um, and fulfill the grant opportunity. And of course, the benefits are too many to name. Uh, it's a tremendous uplift to our transportation department, but the benefits obviously to, to green energy is tremendous, to modernization, and really, you know, to setting um, a good example um, as a as a member of this community for for the future. So I'll pause there and allow any trustee who wishes to make a comment or question at this point uh, to do so. Well, of course, I'm very excited about this grant. Um, I think this is great for the school. This is great for the environment. This is great for our community. Um, now when those buses, you know, when those buses will be driving around the neighborhood picking up kids, you know, there will be less diesel particulate in the air. So I think this is a win for the school district, but also a win for anybody who breathes air in the SOMIS area. Um, so this is wonderful. The amount of money is tremendous. And a huge thank you to BSA and to our transportation staff, um, not only for getting this grant, but for you know, working with our current diesel equipment and maintaining that 
which is not always as easy as, as you know one might think, but these are older buses that we currently have. So thank you, thank you for maintaining those equipment so that way we could trade them in um, for an electric version. Can you hear me? Yes, those those are great questions, great comments, and those are details that we're still sorting out as part of the grant program. Um, and either way, uh, even if uh, we had to uh, use district funding to to uh, establish those more immediately, right? As we look to what solar options are available for us in the coming uh, months and even years, uh, that would still be a tremendous tremendous uh, gain to the district, right? Just because of the assets that we're receiving and um, for all of the other environmental reasons that both of you have alluded to. Um, so uh, yes, that is something that goes hand in hand with uh, this particular grant. And we wanna be able to first consider what the timeline is for those vehicles. I don't know if that's a few months or longer um, duration, but we will certainly continue to report back. And uh, having charging stations is something that um, is an exciting new venture for us. Uh, many districts um, and organizations have moved in that direction, even um, in smaller, you know, um, more localized ways. But I think that's uh, an encouraging way for us to really, uh, you know, continue to modernize ourselves and who we are. And um, so more information to come. But for now, um, and there will be obviously a resolution a little bit later in the agenda, but I really wanted to highlight this because it was the work of, of many and um, and now it's uh, it appears to be coming to fruition for us. Um, moving forward on the facilities grant, I'm sorry, the facilities um, topic, uh, just wanted to uh, indicate that, uh, you know, the end really is near uh, for us around this HVAC and window replacement project. It's a huge undertaking, but we really have seen momentum reinitiated this past several weeks through the break and, and now to current, uh, we are seeing that uh, areas are completely, um, are complete now. And um, just another sign of growth is, or, or of that closure is getting our stage back. We will be hosting our winter um, concert tomorrow and we will make use of the stage area to do so. Uh, the kitchen is scheduled to come online at the end of this week. So again, um, many, many encouraging signs right now. All of the stucco work in the building has been completed, and we're really looking forward to putting those finishing touches so that we can move completely um, in the direction of enjoying and ben reaping the benefits of that um, sacrifice uh, from both the community and also our staff and students and families who um, were unfortunately disrupted through some of this, um, some more than others, of course, but uh, in, either, in either event, we are seeing that things are starting to come to a close. All of those units that we have talked about are on the roof. The roof is pretty much complete at this point. And um, I'm very excited to, to be in the latter part of, parts of this, latter stages of this project. Um, and I'm looking forward to reporting, not just to the board, but to talking about how we might engage our community uh, past and present uh, in in uh, seeing the tremendous growth that has come about based on their contributions and their support for Mesa. So more information on that to come. And lastly, attendance. Um, we have here our attendance figures. If you can maybe slide to the next one. Um, as I mentioned before, our attendance is, is our goal is of 95% and above. It has been a challenge to say the least. Um, in reviewing the case-by-case -case, uh, instances of one or more days of absence. Uh, this has been, you know, a source of, uh, of definitely source of challenge for us uh, because we have been 
um, both maintaining that it's important for parents to help us in our overall wellness, while at the same time trying to bolster um, you know, in-seat and in-person attendance. And those have been challenging to maintain a, a, you know, um, a healthy balance between those two. Uh, with that said, here are our figures. Um, they are not what we would like to see, but I believe that they are an honest evaluation of where things are. And also uh, what we've been reading about uh, more broadly in, in the nation across the region, flu, COVID cases. And fortunately, we're, we're not seeing uh, the, the, the trends around the, the, the really uh, intense health conditions, but nevertheless, enough to keep our students you know, out of school. And that's, it's a difficult thing to balance. We will continue to find a way to do that. But um, for now, this is what, um, what we're experiencing and we'll continue to monitor. With that said, uh, I'd like to conclude my superintendent's report. Thank you. Question, um, when the students return back in January, will there still be any contractors still on site or will all painting and cleaning and all the finishing touches be wrapped up as well? Yeah, that's a great question. We expect that that will all be con um, concluded. Uh, we really do. Um, there may be some very, very small minor things that will happen where most of those can be handled uh, off schedule and with very, very little visibility even to the community. Uh, so even with the paint crew, which is the more aesthetic part of the project, uh, we're scheduling that um, as early as next week. So we do predict that by the 9th, when students return and families return, we will have com a completed project. Do we have um, a very approximate number of students that have signed up for this EAO competition? I don't have that with me uh, because I know that there's, it's an, kind of a rolling, but we will, I will track those down um, as soon as I can. And that'd be great in our board report. Okay. I have a question, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, Mrs. Romero, we're listening. You may have answered this already, but with regards to the electrical buses, are we going to have a charging station at the school? Yeah, that's what we were talking about a second ago, and uh, the answer is yes. We're just trying to find a way to determine if any parts of the grant may be um, satisfying that or if it will be uh, directly district funded. I, in either case, uh, even if it were district funded, it still is a percentage of the overall assets and contributions that we'd be receiving from the grant. But yes, that is the plan and that's the next phase of, of work. Uh, the first thing is just to solidify our place, if you will, in line, because as you can imagine, the demand for electric buses is pretty great and uh, the supply still is limited. So uh, we wanna be able to balance that out well so that by the time they, they arrive, we have a project either close to completion or very much underway. But I hope that answered your question again, Ms. Romero. Yes, thank you. And there's another okay. uh, competition that I'm aware of through the Ventura County Office of Education. It's Battle of the Books. And that is going to take place in April. And I really do think that our kids may say you need to compete. If possible, if possible, we can get a team together. That'd be great. And it's for uh, kids that are in kindergarten through eighth grade. So it's perfect. Yes, my understanding is that that is a, a new venture, venture for BCOE. I'm not quite sure if that, if that is, but uh, I know I'm familiar with it from my prior county. And so I'll, I'll see if there's any alignment there between the two. Uh, but uh, it is something that's on our radar and we'll certainly look into it um, uh, as far as what, what our participation may entail. Thank you. Okay, we can go ahead and move on to board members reports and communications. So we'll start with correspondence. Um, the board received a letter from the Ventura County Office of Education regarding AB 1200 and government code section 3547.5. Um, they have received and uh, the disclosed collective bargaining agreements for the tentative agreements with Mesa Union Teachers Association and Mesa Union Support Team Bargaining Units. It's just a letter saying that they are in receipt um, of our information of the bargaining information, they obviously are not, you know, accepting or denying. Have there been any other board members' reports or communications? 
No. Are there any board members' interests or concerns? I, I have one item here. Uh, that was that in our last meeting, we discussed the Camero Christmas Parade and involvement with that. And uh, I was in receipt of a copy of the um, Christmas Parade. Uh, somebody made a video of that. And I also uh, forwarded that along with the PDF version of what all the requirements are to uh, Dr. Ramirez so that we can make plans for the coming year. Excellent. I also attended the parade and took some pictures as well. Um, uh, the information was not sent out and spread with the student council, um, but my family was there and I bought my own kids hot chocolate and we um, made some notes, we got some ideas going. And so then um, we'd love to still maybe meet or maybe I can go um, attend the next student council meeting, uh, maybe after the holiday. Um, and then we can get some brainstorming while it's all fresh in our minds about what we might want to do for next year. So that way we don't have any of the last minute stress. You know, we can do it while it's still fresh in our minds for those that attended. Okay. So then we can move on to the consent agenda. So can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda items A through D? Make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented to items A through B. I'll second the motion. Any comments, concerns? I guess I had one question. Um, I just noticed that when I was looking at our check register that we had spent um, some money on PE equipment. So I wasn't sure if Maybe it was something new for the playground or if it was for, um, you know, just PE equipment, but it, it seems significant. So it seemed more than just like some basketballs. Uh, yes, it's a significant um, upgrade to, um, to our PE uh, department and PE endeavors. So I'll just say this, it gives me an opportunity to really talk uh, through uh, as uh, the board is aware and the public is aware, we have a new uh, PE teacher that uh, came uh, this year, Mr. Omar Soto. Um, uh, Mr. Soto has the dual role of PE teacher and also effectively doubles as an athletic director for us. So he and I have been meeting regularly, um, dating back to the summer actually, when he was hired on, I, I asked them to uh, inventory and to help inventory the, uh, the current uh, materials that were available. Uh, he did. And uh, he came back to me a little sheepishly about uh, really what he felt the need really was. And I said, well, if that's the need in order to really get us to where we need to be as far as our PE program and really making sure that our kids both um, uh, enjoy, you know, the, the equipment that they really need in order to take part in the activities that are uh, perhaps uh, just evolving our program, then it's going to require a contribution from the district. So uh, he did, he literally rolled up his sleeves, uh, looked through every single shed and piece of equipment that we had available, uh, discarded things that were really obsolete or outdated or whatever the case might be. And he put together a rather comprehensive list, which we were able to fulfill. And so, yes, it was more than basketballs because there are going to be um, a number of things that are, um, that are uh, activities, if you will that he's looking to um, build out as part of our program. And obviously this being his first year, it'll be a great indication of how we then build for the future. So um, I, I just am very excited um, at where we are and very pleased at where uh, we could be going as well. Any other comments, concerns? Okay, I can, um... Are all those in favor of adopting consent agenda 12A through D? Say aye. 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 Thank you, Sandra. Uh, all those opposed? Zero, passes five zero. Next, we will move on to information and discussion, which doesn't look like there's anything. No, there is actually even So we'll go ahead and go, um, since we've already um, taking a motion on 14A, we will go ahead to 14B. 
So if I could get a motion to um, adopt resolution 22-2304 regarding the annual and five-year accounting of the development fees for the fiscal year 21-22 uh, per GC 66001D. I move that we adopt resolution 22-2304 regarding the annual and five-year accounting of, de of development fees uh, for the fiscal year 2021 through 2022 as per GC 6601 or 66,001B. Can I get a second? I will second. Um, any discussion? Isn't this where we had the survey done to determine the fees for when people are getting their maybe properties expanded or renovated? And then this was just increasing to meet current times, correct? Uh, that was part of that was partially the case. That actually was something that the board already took action on. This is more of, a, of an accounting principle. So if you take a look, uh, we have up on the screen the background for this particular item, and it is um, a five-year accounting uh, of those developer fees. And as you see, we have to make a, both an annual accounting and then a five-year uh, accounting. And this is a combination, as the last line reads, uh, the, the findings and the annual accounting reporting. So... Uh, the board had already taken action on that very thing, and this is part of that, but it's, it's more of the reporting feature than it is making any substantive change at this time. And did I read correctly that I guess it maybe it's the five year accounting that it's almost $100,000? Uh, if we can bring that up. <clears throat> Which one are you referencing, Mrs. Dryden? I just thought I read somewhere that it was like 90 something thousand dollars in total. You're saying in the terms of the balance? Yeah. Yes. Um, it may actually be, give me just a moment. It might be in the last exhibit. The other one's just the accounting. Yeah, the bottom yes, of that. Yes, and actually, it actually is 97,127. That is our, uh, was our beginning fund balance, beginning balance on that and has now grown to 97,864. So uh, that was also part of the um, the first interim. Mm -hmm. right. And but that's a five year total or that's a since existence total? That, that, is, that is, I can't tell you in existence, but that is our five year total at this point. Okay. Any other questions? Well, I, it's not so much a question as a statement of fact is that with regards to developer fees, I'm grateful for them, and I, I'm grateful that we're able to show that we've uh, been good stewards of the funds that we've received. Uh, that's the most important thing. One of the things that uh, is a little problematic for me over the years is that we've had to increase development. We increase developer fees year after year after year, and even during the trying times, we've done that. And the the downside is is if we don't do that, and this is where I want to be on record is don't do that. Um, we only get a portion or percentage of what the Oxnard Union High School District gets. And so if we don't take this little bit compared to the overall, then Oxnard Union High will take them all. And so uh, it, I think that that's important to understand that, you know, we as a board should be mindful of uh, who the residents are of the district and the burden that it may be on them. But um, if they would the, their overall burden of the taxpayers of the district uh, would be consumed either uh, by Oxford Union High School District completely or by those that feed into it that are within the district. Okay. All right. Then all those in favor say aye. 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 Sandra? Aye. Okay. All those opposed? Hearing none, passes 5-0. And then if I can get a motion to accept the certification signatures for the period of December 14th, 2022 through December 15th, 2023. I move that we accept the certification of signatures for the period uh, January 1, 2023 through, that should be. Well, it's tomorrow because everybody was. So let me let me let me make a clarification. Yeah. I'm, I apologize, but uh, the period is January first, 2023, 
through June 30th, 2023. And uh, I believe the copy you had uh, around the board agenda summary uh, had a an error in it, but uh, the, the correct date as we have it is January 1st of this coming year through June 30th of 2023. Okay, and I'll just continue to make that through January 1, 2023 through June 30th, 2023. Is there a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Hearing none, pass by zero. And so then we'll need to have um, a motion to accept the proposed board meeting date calendar for the 2023 calendar year. Make a motion to approve the um, board meeting date calendar for 2023. In a second. I'll second the motion. Thank you, Ms. Romero. Any discussion? It looks like it was following our traditional pattern. Uh, it, it certainly was. Um, and I just wanted to make mention, especially uh, because of um, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Hupp's uh, inclusion now of, uh, as a board trustee, um, the March 14th uh, meeting is one that uh, does not fall in line uh, with that cycle, but that's uh, really intended to um, for for human resources um, uh, priorities in particular, and then um, that that other special board meeting out in June that uh, is intended to allow us to both satisfy the um, the adopted budget and the adoption of the LCAP. But other than that, that is that is very much um, brought forward from current year. Okay. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Zero. Passes five zero. So then we're looking to make um, a motion to adopt the resolution twenty two dash twenty three dash oh five for the authorized participation in the HI, HBIP public school bus set aside for small and medium air districts. I make a motion for the adoption of the resolution 22-23-05 for the authorized participation in the HBIP public school bus set aside for small district, for small and medium air districts. I'll second the motion. Um, any discussion? Is this a part of what is allowing us to get this grant? Yes. Part of what goes into the, the 30 days and the Part B. Then all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, pass by zero. Um, next, we're moving on to human resources. So I need to get a motion to approve the revised principal salary schedule that is effective July 1, 2022. I move that we approve the revised principal salary schedule effective July 1, 2022. I'll second. Any discussion, comments? Uh, maybe you could explain this a little bit for the South that was not here for the negotiations that you know facilitate or necessitate so the school district the school is kind of offset in terms of negotiation of salaries and so we just finished bargaining units and that's what we agreed earlier to and that was all of the classified and certificated staff and administration such as principal and um, coming later in the agenda like the executive assistant are on different pay and so then now that we've finished the bargaining and then we're doing that but it's for this school year that we're in which is why it starts july 1st of 2022 it's this school year okay so then all of those in favor Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, pass five zero. And so similarly, um, we need to get a motion to approve the revised classified confidential monthly salary schedule effective July 1st, 2022. I make a motion for the approval of the revised classified confidential monthly salary schedule effective July 1st, 2022. 
I'll second. second the motion. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Um, any other discussions? The same thing, but now this is the executive. Okay. All right. Then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, passes 5 0. Next, we need to get a motion to approve the job description for the after school and expanded learning support specialist. I move that we approve the job description for the after school and expanded learning support specialist. Can I get a second? I'll go ahead and second the approval for the job description, the after school and expanded learning support specialist. And then Dr. Ramirez, can you give us um, an overview as this is a new position for the district? Uh, yes, um, this is a position that um, has uh, really grown out of a, of a desire to uh, really uh, contend with the expansion of um, after school programming. Um, and the idea would be to uh, have a certificated position that can help uh, really support um, the uh, after school activities leaders in carrying out their um, their responsibilities. So um, the funding from it would come from the after school, I'm sorry, the expanded learning uh, opportunity grant. And so there is a, a, an opportunity to fund that position that way. Um, furthermore, there's also an opportunity here to um, just be able to, um, with that expansion, it's revealed to me that there are elements of the early grades that uh, really need to be almost uh, set aside a little differently in order to provide that alignment to the day program. Um, and conversely, at the middle school, uh, having an opportunity to do the same, but for a different audience. So because we spend TK-8, there is an opportunity here to really uh, make uh, continue to evolve the program and match it with not only the day program, but really what we want uh, of an after-school program on its own. Um, in its own merit. So to me, the expansion merits uh, additional support, which at this moment uh, we can fund via the grant that we received um, last year really, but continued into this year. W one other thing, it's a renewable grant. So we can expect that it will continue um, uh, for the out years. It's not uh, a one and done, if you will. But it's good to know. Okay. Then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Hearing none, that's a five zero. All right. So next is to get a motion to approve um, the proposal from Iswerd for the software services. What? Make a motion to the proposal from I squared for software services. Okay. Dr. Ramirez, can you give us background? Yes. Uh, so this is this is a, a device, um, as it lists there. It's a it's a gateway device that will allow us to be able to uh, patch our internet through the county. We needed to replace two firewalls uh, that uh, were at end of life. And given the cost consideration for the firewall versus this device, um, in partnership with uh, VCOE, we decided to move in this direction. And um, it actually would, would um, amount, it would create a bit of a cost savings now and ultimately allow us to have better security uh, for, for the district. Um, so with that said, I uh, thought that this would be a prudent direction to go. We actually have installation already scheduled now. We have the device in hand. It's actually in the possession of ECOE, and um, it will. It's slated for installation on January fourth. I just confirmed that today. If I can interject something, Juniper uh, is a major uh, provider in this arena, and they're on par with what Cisco is. Just so that people that are, you may know the. Uh, Cisco as a name has has been around for a long time uh, in the security environment. But Juniper has been around very, very long and, and are very well recognized as well. Any other comments? All right, then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Opposed? Hearing none, passes by zero. So items for the future consideration are the 2021 to 2022 school accountability report card. And then our next future meetings are January 14th, 2023, which is a special board meeting for a governance workshop. And then January 17th, 2023 will be our regular board meeting at six o'clock. So with that, I adjourn at 729. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Romero. You're welcome. Thank you.